Well, as what happens sometimes in life, things change. I got a call from a gallery in Jackson Hole that I show in. And uh, they sold a copy of uh, my sitting bull bust. And so I'm going to have to uh, get to work on that. So I'm going to have to take this off the stand. And it'd probably be a year before I get to it because uh, the uh, there's a possibility I'll be doing four uh, famous warriors from the past, from the Old West. Uh, for uh, a gentleman and uh, I'll be probably busy doing that for the next several months maybe a, maybe a year it, it depends on how quickly I can do each one so I'll put my idea for doing a uh, female figure for off the table for now and uh, I mean I gotta make a living Time to play with some play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a uh, turntable, a Lazy Susan, on the bottom of my clay so that uh, I can put it close to me and I can work on it closer to me than in the center of the table and keep it in camera view all the time. And so that's what I'm going to do right now. Uh, let's see. Get my drill wherever I put that. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> I can't see the forest for the trees. Okay. By the way, you can get these Lazy Susans from Sculpture Depot in, Dot, in, in uh, Loveland, Colorado. They're really handy to have. Ah. The talent doesn't come with them, though, unfortunately. And I'm suffering from no talent today. The only reason I'm anchoring it onto the base of my clay of a sitting bull is because I don't want it sliding off of the uh, turntable. But if you're working on a uh, kitchen table, having a Lazy Susan on the bottom of your sculpture is really handy. It worked out just fine. So now I can turn him without having to uh, turn the whole table. Although the table wants to turn too, but anyway. Uh, I want to work a little bit on his face, and uh, I have his uh, scalp lock to put on yet, and finish the texturing of his hair. And you have some work on his fingers as well. So. We'll get busy on this in a second here. As soon as I get this uh, sculpting stand to the right height.
I've been getting calls from the gallery, so I may be interrupted again. It's all a matter of moving small molecules of clay when you get this size. Both cameras are starting to get low on battery, so I'm going to have to pack it in, I think. In a couple minutes. All right, I'm gonna call it quits. First, I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of a lighter fluid. To smooth it out a little bit. I'm really happy the way the eyes are turning out now. I wasn't too happy before. For those of you who are watching my videos for the first time, this Ronsonol lighter fluid has a property in it that melts the plastiline clay a little bit, and then you can smooth it with it. What I do is I have an artist friend who's a painter, and... Uh, a rather well-known one and I get his used brushes and they're the best ones for doing this because they don't shed I've been trying to get a particular look in his eye one of kind of like a mixed anger 
at losing all his land and freedoms. And uh, a strength as well. All right, that will be it for tonight, and I'll pick this up tomorrow. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.